Hey everyone, welcome to the Church at South Edmonton. My name is Perry, and if this is your first time here, this is what you can expect. First, we're gonna start off with Nick and the team leading us in worship, and then after that, our very own Kelly Chemo is gonna be bringing the word this morning. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a message in the comments section of where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, email us at info at thechurchse.com. Good morning, everyone. Why don't you stand as we enter into worship? I'll run to you, my heart's in your hands now. I'm not afraid with you by my side. I feel your love is burning inside me. Deep down.
If this is your first time here, my name is Chantel. I am so glad that you decided to join us today. If you're watching online, go ahead and put your name in the chat. Let us know that you are here. If you're here in person, let's take 30 seconds to greet your neighbor. two to three new people, you can make your way back to your seat. Like I said, my name is Chantel. I'm so glad that you joined us today. If this is your first time here or your first time in a while, I want to encourage you to reach into the seat pocket in front of you, fill out that black and gold connect card, drop it off at the hub, which is the desk outside the doors. We want to meet you. We want to get connected with you. Alternatively, if you want to get involved with what the church at South Edmonton is doing, you can do so a couple of ways. On the back of the Connect card, you can sign up for a ministry. We run programs throughout the week, and we still have a lot going on through the summer. So don't write it off. Fill out the Connect card. You can also email us at info at thechurchse.com and figure out where you fit, what ministry you want to get involved with. Through your generosity, you can make a huge difference. We believe in principled living at Case, and tithing is a very large part of that. We believe that everything comes from the Father, and we are good stewards of what we've been given. And through our generosity, we are living principled life. Amen. Amen. If you want to do so, if you want to give today, you can do so a couple of ways. There's a booth set up at the back ready to receive check debit cash credit. You can give through our website or by sending an e-transfer to give at the church se.com. If that's on your heart today, I want to pray for you. Father God, we just thank you for who you are and for what you've done. We love you, Father. We just pray that you would open our hearts, open our ears today, Lord God, to hear what you have for us. Today, as we give back to you, we ask that you would bless our tithes and our offerings, that you would multiply them, that they would do exceedingly far abundant than we could ever ask, dream, or imagine. 
In Jesus' name, amen. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. that you are with us in the highest of heights and the lowest of lows, that we cannot flee from your presence. That is such a beautiful promise, you guys. Moments when we feel like we're all by ourselves and there's no one else around. The moments when we feel like we could shout with joy and expectation, he is there with us. Thank you, God, that you are everything that we actually really need. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank 
presence.
nothing else And nothing else And nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else, oh Lord And nothing else Nothing else will do
chasing after me all the days and all my life you have been faithful thank you lord and all my life you have been so so Psalms 145 says, your, your beauty and your splendor have everybody talking. I compose songs on your wonders. Your marvelous doings are headline news. I could write a book full of details of your greatness. The fame of your goodness spreads across, across the country. Your righteousness is on everyone's lips. God is all mercy and grace. 
not quick to anger, but he is rich in love. God is good to one and all. Everything he does is soaked through grace. If I was to ask you how God has been good to you in your life, what would you say? God's goodness is so much more than just things, tangible things, items. Oh, I got a roof over my head. I have a good job. His, see, His goodness is paired with His generosity. He wants to bring us out of sorrow into joy. He wants to bring us out of long suffering into gladness. God's goodness is ready for you today. He is ready to receive that. Do you believe that? Amazing. Well, Father God, as we turn from worship, Lord God, into the word today, we just pray that you would open our hearts, open our ears, Lord God, that you would bless the word we are about to receive, that it would go down into our hearts like a seed and it would bear good fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, and we have a special guest with us this morning. I am so honored and excited to announce that Case's own Kelly Chemo is speaking this morning. Would you guys give him a warm case welcome? Thank you. Hey, everybody. So good to be here. And uh, so nice having a table. <laughs> you know, God is so good. You know what, worship team, you guys are amazing. You know, thank you. Thanks for leading. Can we just sing that one part, God is so good? I just love that. It's just amazing because you know what, God is so good. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Let's think of all the good things that he's done in our lives. Continues to do. Thank you, Jesus. God, you is so good. He is so good to me. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know what? I just want you guys to keep that posture. Keep thinking how God is so good. And um, I'm just so thankful to be here. Thank you so much for asking me to share and. You know, I, I usually share, you know, to every one person at a time, and this is good. Now we can do it at a lot of people at a time, you know? And we're a good team. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah, it's just so good to be here. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Kelly. I'm usually in the background there back here. I'm having a lot of fun. I love to worship, love to play guitar, and you know what? It's just such a blessing. It's good to see uh, Brent and Rony here. Love you guys. What a special day. And um, I'm married to Tracy here, my best friend. I love her so much. And you know what? Even, even down here when I was just, like, I, you know what? I don't know if I'm biased or something, but I just love watching her worship. It just kind of lifts me up even more. It's like, wow, because I know how much she loves God. And, you know, I'm so thankful. And, and like, even that song, God is so good. You know, um, Tracy is like, you know what? The only person I ever dated you know, since we've been married, and, um, oh, no, <laughs> wait, wait, let's rewind, yeah, she is the only person I ever dated, and you know what, God actually showed me, and even showed my friend who um, I was going to marry, and she was just a little kid, I was a little kid, too, we were in a youth group together and all that, so I'm just so thankful, and we have three daughters, and you know what, we're so blessed, and one little grandson now, and we're so excited, but you know what, they're away, and we're just so sad, <laughs> So, you know, I told him, I go, hey, let's just keep the kid here and you guys go away. But um, I guess I have to go show the other family, you know, the other stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm just so thankful. I'm even so thankful to be part of Case, this body here, this tribe. I like calling us a tribe. You know, what? we're like the Jesus tribe. And we get here together and you know what? We just sharpen each other to support each other. And it's just so good. And um, one little thing, too. I am a little ADD. 
So, you know, I get easily distracted. So what I did, you know, I asked Brendan, Brendan, thank you so much for getting all the butterflies and squirrels out of the way. He collected them all from the church, so now there's nothing to, um, you know, distract me. How many did you get? There was a few, right? I'm 20. There you go. See? I still have yet to see one. But, um, yeah, I got, um, you know what? God has given me something to share. And... Um, it's been brewing in me, and you know what? It's actually took months for me, you know, because, you know, I got a thick head a bit, that God to kind of drill something into me, and it was just so good, and you know what? I'm so happy I get to share with you, and I pray that God will use this. Holy Spirit will, you know what, lead you guys and kind of do the same thing what it did in my life, and it changed my life, and you know, so many times you always think, you know what? We don't live a successful life, and, and why not, and we feel so down, but you know what? I pray that this message and, and what God has showed me in my life can help you guys. And, and you know what? Bring that success. And success isn't finance or nothing. Success is, you know what, having purity and just joy when you wake up, you know? And, and the good thing is, you know what I love about God is every day is a new day. So no matter what you did yesterday, today is a new day. Amen? And you know what? Yesterday he's left behind. And I love it when God says, you know what? He throws our sins, you know, from the west to the east that way as far as that. He, he doesn't even know. He forgets. Don't you just love that? And it's like so amazing. So I just want to know something. How many of you guys here, I'm going to share about a little story, have actually done so much work and worked so hard. And when you find out at the end it was wrong. So many times you get so tired, and, and it's like, man, I don't want to do this again, and you know you got to do it again, right? And um, if you can just um, pull up a slide of that um, snake that I have there, if you have it, right there. If you guys know what this is, I'm an audio guy, so you know, I'm a production company, I've been in this all my life. So if you look at a box like that, my friend and I were both wiring it up one day, okay? So there's a lot of wires, you're soldering it, and you know... The other one was about 100 feet away, and he was working at one end, I'm working at the other end, okay? And now, with this, if you don't get it right together, it's not going to work. So, you know, we spent all afternoon, I was at one end, he's at the other end. And of course, you know, I don't listen very well, as Tracy knows. I do listen, but then I forget about details. Details is, I got little issues with details, I don't know why. So then, I'm wiring it, soldering it, he's doing it, it took us all afternoon, pretty well all day to do this. And then just to find out, I did the wrong wires. So looking at it, it's not going to work, right? And then you're going, oh, man, now i got to redo this all over again. And not saying I did it wrong. He had the wrong colors. And I had, I'm colorblind, too, by the way. So you don't ask a colorblind guy to do things. And back about the colorblind guy, by the way. Just a little side story here. So um, our son-in-law was getting married to our daughter, and now he's our son-in-law. And of course, they asked the colorblind guy to order the suit for him. Yeah. And I'm always way too fast. My mind runs 100 miles an hour. And so the suit came in, and it was about, what, a day or two before the wedding? A few days, and I thought I ordered the white suit for him. It was pink. So. And it's like, to me, it looked, still looked white to me, by the way, but it was pink. And, and you know what? He did pull it off pretty good because there was no, I couldn't go back because it was during COVID and what's done is done. And he kind of liked it. But again, you don't ask a colorblind guy to do things. So, but Tracy said, didn't you read? And I'm like, you know, I thought I did. <laughs> but, um, but that's what happened in this case too, because there's colors on here. So there's ways to do this. Now we go to make it work, and of course it doesn't work, and it's like, uh, and it's always like, Kelly, what did you do? It's, it's like, I don't know why I always get blamed, right? It's always, Kelly, what did you do? I was like, I didn't do anything. I did what you told me to do. And then he looks, no, that's not what I told you to do. So then what happened was all the work that I did had to get redone. And I'm going, Okay. And then, you know, and then I started to think, uh, you know, about, it's like, wow, how many times do we labor? We work so hard to do things. And you have great intentions, by the way. And not even saying that we're doing it bad, because if he would have did the wires the other way, then, you know, it would have worked anyway. But we work so hard, and then it's like, you go, oh, man, i got to redo this again. It's like, why? <laughs> you know, you get so tired of redoing things. And then, so... 
one day, so we looked at that. We can get rid of that picture now. You guys get the idea about it, right? And we all hate it. We've all been there, right? We've all done work, and we have to redo it again. So um, I'm reading my notes, which is pretty cool. See, we don't, we don't use digital things here. You know what? I even brought a Bible out, which I love. It's awesome. And then um, one day, it was back in September, and God was telling me, Kelly, this is, it took a while for me to clue in here. He goes, Kelly, I want you to cast your net on the other side. I'm like, okay, what are you saying, God? You know, I've been around a long time, and it's like fishing, and it's like, I don't fish. Can I? Well, I kind of fish, but I, you know, don't like touching the fish. But, um, but he's telling me, you know, I want you to cast your net on the other side, and I'm going, God, what are you trying to tell me, Holy Spirit? And he was even talking with Tracy, like, I don't know what God is trying to say here, but casting my net on the other side. And this went on, actually, for months. I don't even think half a year. And then I woke up, whoa, I got it, right? And um, it was just amazing when I got it. And, and it will be life-changing because it's amazing. So I want to read this. We're going to go to um, John 21. And I'm just going to read this. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and the two other disciples were together. And then he cried, hey, I'm going to go fishing, Simon Peter said, told them. And then they said, we'll go with you. So they went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Can you imagine? They went out fishing and caught nothing that night. And I've gone fishing where we've caught nothing. Because um, my son-in-law loves fish. And so, you know, I kind of started taking up fishing with him. And he really wanted a fish. So then you know, we got a fish. We got out fishing with friends and everything caught nothing. And then so, you know, I said, okay, you know, I'm just going to go to the pier and just do it. And then so I went to the pier, caught this huge fish. It was like this big. And of course, it's a fish story. But, <laughs> but it, I think in my eyes, it was like this big, by the way. And I'm going, yes, I got it for my son, you know. Because I never had a son. All I got is daughters. And so, you know, it was just such a blessing. And got it and, you know, seeing the joy in his face. And it was just so good. And I just cut it off the pier, which was, like, amazing. Okay, let me finish. Sorry. Okay. He goes, I'm going fishing. And then early that morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples didn't, did not realize that it was Jesus. And he goes, hey, haven't you caught anything yet? Which is so good. He goes, they answered, no. <laughs> you know. And how many times has that happened to us? So many times. Hey, you got now we got nothing. And then he said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And um, so, you know, they, I've battled with this for a long time, months. And I'm going, God, what are you trying to tell me? I'm, I already know you. I know what I'm doing and all this and that, right? And then it was like the story of that, um, the snake that I did, right? All our lives, we work so hard. We work so hard to accomplish something. And sometimes you think, you know, we're all going uphill the whole time. And you're going, man, what is going on? What's wrong with my life? How come, how come you know, you see success in other people and, and in our lives, it's just, you know, you're just there. And you know what? And God says, you know, I still love you. He's talking to me. And he goes, you're doing good. You're doing okay. You're doing things. But, you know, sometimes we just have to, like... Listen. <laughs> you know, we're fishing, but he's telling me to listen. He's going, Kelly, I need you to listen. Throw it on the right side. And then it, it's so funny because you look at Simon Peter and them, and they go, well, we've been fishing all night. And what blows my mind is they didn't say, hey, forget it. We're not going to do it. We're all night. We got nothing. I don't want to waste more time. I'm tired. <laughs> and it was even like that, the snake if I didn't fix it, it would be useless anyway, unless somebody did something. So, you know, Jesus goes, Holy Spirit goes to me, he goes, you know what, Kelly, I want you to throw it on the other side. And then what I did is, okay, God, I got it now. You know, we strive, we push, we talk, we go to church, we do day to day, and, you know, it's just, it, it gets mundane, by the way, just to let you know. And, and, and what got to me, I go to Luke, if you go to Luke 5, 4, 7, and that was actually the calling of Simon Peter, 
right? When he went fishing and Jesus was speaking and then you got on his boat and then he goes, oh, hey, go out there and catch some fish. And Simon goes, we've been out all night again. This is in the beginning. And we caught nothing. And he goes, okay, just go out. You'll find something. So they went out and, okay, they got a whole bunch of fish, right? And that was the calling of Peter and the disciples, the first thing. And then what blew my mind was, why did it happen again in the end? <laughs> and then I look at, you know, in our, in our lives, right? When we first get saved, Jesus calls you guys, calls us. And we're all going to go, yeah, we're going to do it. And we're going to, things are going to be amazing, which they are. And then somehow life just kind of makes it go down like this, right? And you're just getting by in life. And then the cool thing is at the end, he tells them to do the same thing. And again, it happened. And I'm going, you know what, God, what are you trying to tell me? And what he's trying to tell me is, Kelly, you know what? The things you've been doing is good. But hey, I think now is the time to start obeying and listening. And then I started to think, it's not like he had to get a new boat, right? It was the same boat, same nets. And here's what blew my mind, by the way. Same lake. They've been fishing all night. The fish are there, you guys. <laughs> they didn't just appear. The fish was already in there. And now when we start to listen and obey, and instead of, you know, Simon Peter and them, they could have said, forget it. We're tired. We're not going to do it. We're going to listen. And they threw it in. Okay, we know what happened, the end story. And it happened twice. Who knows how many times it happened. And then he goes, you know what, Kelly? I want you to change. I want you to change your thinking, your thoughts. I want you to cast your net on the right side of the boat. And you're going to see what I'm going to do. And instead of us pushing so hard and worrying, oh, what's going to happen? I got to do this and that. You know what? If you're there, he will make it happen. Amen? And I'm telling you right now, God is the same today and yesterday. And the same God, the same Jesus that was actually in uh, John 21 calling out to us. And Jesus called out to me. He goes, Kelly, throw your net on the other side. Are you ready for this? And I'm going, God, yeah, I'm ready. I want it. Because you know what? It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, whether it's two days or 50 years. We still got to always retune, re refine ourselves inside. And God wants to use each one of you guys here. It's the same. You guys are no different than anybody up here. No different than any even televangelist person that's huge preachers. You guys have the same. We all have the same God. He's given us all the same portion. He's given us everything. Because God is so good. He's so faithful. He loves each one of you guys. And back to the lake. It's the same place. So God's not telling us. And he even told me, he goes, Kelly, I'm not telling you to change things. I'm not telling you to get other things and to do it in a different way because he's already given us the abilities. He's given Peter the boat. He gave him the nets and the lake. It's how we use it and how our attitude is inside, right? See, God is not asking us to change who we are and what we do. God is asking us to listen to his voice and maybe do things different. Twist it around. You'll get that success in life. And success is just happiness in him, right? And everything, you know, just follows into suit. And God wants you guys to follow into suit. He wants me to. And he wanted me to share this because it's like so easy. It's actually not hard. And so many times we complicate the word of God. We complicate God. We overthink it. See, we have a daughter that's an overthinker. And what happens is we over, they overthink so much that it actually kind of dives a bit, eh? And it's so funny because um, we had to do our first marriage as, you know, for our kids, right? And um, the funny thing with our girls and all that, we always try to plan but sometimes our plans aren't the right plans. And we worry so much. You know, then we were planning this wedding and all that, and then COVID hits. It's like, wow, okay. That's a big, um, you know, now we got to change the plans. And that was right when it hits. And then it's like, you know what, okay, let's, 
you know, cast the net on the other side. And then so what happened? What did we do? We did a whole virtual wedding. We had, you know, drive-in wedding. And we actually made the paper. We made news around the world because I think it was the first one of its kind. So we brought a big LED wall up like this. And all the cars parked. We had security. And it was actually... Um, and then his family couldn't make it in. So what we did, we just zoomed him on the wall, and it was like it was all there. And wasn't that amazing? It was actually, I think, better than it would have been. And that's what God is saying. We plan so much, but he always has better than what we think we have and the things we do. And, man, I, I just, I get so excited because I get to share this with you guys. And um, one thing... Um, I told Tracy, Tracy's awesome. She gets um, these bulletins and all that, and she sent it to me to this morning, and it was actually really, really cool. And I'm going, I want to share this today because I think this is um, kind of what God wants to do in his church right now. He wants, he wants to change each one of us more to be like him. And you guys will be so happy. So in a bulletin, this is from, um, it's called Small Straws, the Trumpet Vision Sounds, the Trumpet by Bill Burns. And he goes, allow me to restore and strengthen you and bring you fully into the blessings of my kingdom. All the things that I have given to you are yours by right, by inheritance. And as you release your faith, you shall come and renew hope and expectation. Shake off the doubts and fears that have plagued you and dare to believe absolutely that you are coming into the time of favor. Come and receive, says the Lord. And man, when I read that, I was like, whoa. And he's telling you guys this right now too. He's giving you everything. Let's put doubt and fear aside. And let's rise up to who God has made you guys to be. And me to be. And he goes, and he's still, he's still coming out. He goes, Kelly. He goes, do you want? Cast your net. Do you want to listen? Do you want to take that effort and redo it? I'm like, God, I want it. And I'm telling you, it's so rewarding when we do that. It's life-changing. Let's rethink what we do. It's just, um, you know, the more I think about it, it's great. And then Proverbs, you hit me with that too. And I wrote this down. Proverbs 4.12, it says, When you walk... Your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. And um, it's just, I can't explain this to you, but I'm telling you, I pray that the Holy Spirit just lead in that. And I want to choose to cast my net onto the other side. And then this is what's so cool too, right? So they did that. They got a whole bunch of fish. And, and the cool thing, and then they found, hey, that's Jesus. And then they ran out. And then, and then here's what's really cool. Wouldn't you find this cool, Jesus making breakfast for you? <laughs> okay, he brought in the thing. The, he brought in the fish, but he had the fire going. And he goes, bring some here, and I'm going to make breakfast for you. Jesus wants to make breakfast for you guys and for me. And um, this is so cool. In here, I know I didn't put it up there. In here, okay, Simon Peter climbed aboard, dragged the net ashore, and it was full of large fish, 153. <laughs> okay. This was done about 2,000 years ago. Like, really, 153? I'm going, what does 153 have to do with anything? <laughs> why would you put 153? And then so, you know, my mind starts thinking, God, why did you do 153 fish? So, you know what? I, I'm a numbers guy. So what I did is, you know what? I started to search what 153 meant. I looked it up. And you know what it says? Is it's an event that's major and underway here. Proceeding a new phase of restoration. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's like, okay, what happened at that breakfast? Jesus was restoring Peter back. And he told three times, right? Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. And, and you got to remember, Peter was Jesus, with Jesus for three or four years by then. And he knew he loved him. 
So, you know what? If Jesus is asking us, Kelly, do you love me still? And it doesn't matter how many years I've been serving him or a Christian. We just keep going back sometimes. But what was profound was Jesus called Peter in the beginning with the fish. And he restored him again with the fish. So I was looking at 153, you know, the meanings of it all as well. And they actually had bullet points. It's harmonious, tolerant, caring, humanitarian, wise, giving, generous, artistic, and compassionate. So I'm going, okay, this, this was written a long time ago. <laughs> that blew my mind when I read about the 153. But why were they so specific? You know, do you think God knew? Yeah. <laughs> he knows what the meaning is. Restoration. Exactly. Like, I don't even know who counted 153 fish. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it just blew my mind. 153 fish. And then God's calling us, no matter how long you've been a Christian or serving God, he wants to restore each one of us here back to him. We always got to, it's like I'm a guitar guy. I tune my guitar regularly. If I don't, it'll go out of tune. So God right now here is saying, hey, in all our lives, we gotta, he keeps restoring us. He keeps tuning us every day. And when we get into the word, and you know what, when we start to love each other, and maybe, you know what, when we cast our net on the other side, Maybe God is saying, you know what? He wants church to change. I, maybe he wants us to do things. See, I had this vision the other day, too, that I just can't get out of my head. I was in back of the church, and all I see is back of heads, people sitting down. I think the time of sitting down is over. I think God wants us now to rise. He wants each one of you to do what he called us to do. It's not even on one person anymore or a team. You guys are the team. And God wants to use each one of you. There is like no more sitting around. He loves you so much. And we sing, you know, how good God is. And he is so good. But I want to have that vision where I'm looking in the back. And, you know, there's no more heads. Back of the heads. We're tired of sitting here. You know? It's time to get out. Get out in our community right? And share. And it's not even share. You know what? Your action speaks volumes. Just be happy. You know what? Just show the love. He loves you guys so much. You know, he, you are everything to him. He died for each one of you. Not just these people here or whatever, or you see the people up top. You guys are the people up top. You know, here's one thing that always hits me, and Brett knows this too. We work with a lot of big artists and, and you know, a lot of big celebrities and all that, and, and people ask me this question, which is so cool, and I know you get asked that too, and they're like, isn't it great meeting these people? Aren't they so interesting? And I look at them and go, no. I said, you're interesting. Because you are a person... And you guys are interesting. The days of celebrities and all that, yeah, it's great. You know, they made it. We like them. It's good visiting with them, you know, talking to them. But you know what? Each person here has something. And in my eyes, you guys are big. And that's what I tell them too. So it's just, um, you know, the things we do, like even the Horsepower for Hope and, and everything and the activities we do, so many people see us out there. And you know what? Hey, we just, we love Jesus, but you just love them too. Jesus loves you guys, and he wants us to follow suit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, let's see how much more I got. Huh? See, I'm looking at the time. We're doing good. They told me, you know what? They say, here's the thing. I've always asked for a microphone. I never get one back there. <laughs> you know what? These guys are in trouble now. I got a mic. And I said, I got a mic. And he, hey, today I'm blessed, by the way. If you look over here, there's carpet on the stage. I usually get stuck in the middle with no carpet. So right now, I just feel like, you know what? I'm, today's a really good day. It's, you know, I got a microphone. I got to stand on the carpet this afternoon, you know, this morning. I'm like, I was like, honestly, static. 
So it's just so good. I got to, who knows, I can keep going. No, I am keeping going. But anyhow, um, just back to seriousness. Restoration. God says, cast the net on the other side. Hey, do we got a picture of that net or no? No? Oh, yeah, if we can put it up. That's pretty cool. Okay, there's a guy. So now, I want you guys even to picture yourselves. That's you up there. And we're going to go for the fish. You know? Oh, I got it written down here. See, I almost forgot. A good thing I didn't forget. God's power is far greater than anything on earth. Just to let you guys know. And you will see it at work when we obey him. Especially in situations that seem so unpromising in our own eyes. Jesus is concerned about you more than you will ever know. Jesus gave us the greatest catch to show that they are called to be fishermen. That they would be able to do great things with him. Jesus was showing them and showing us that he will provide for us. We need to have fellowship and obedience with him. God loves us so much and has given us all that we need. All we have to do is walk. The fish were there. You guys have the boat. You have the net and the lake. It depends how we go fishing. And you can go fishing for men, but fishing, you can catch anything in life, basically. You can have victory in everything when we just stand back and let God do it. Yeah. Right? Amen. Hey, you know, we can have the band back. Some of the band. I know I called them early. <laughs> I like to get them, you know, by surprise. Oh, no, we're sitting back there and just, you know, they're eating chips back there and popcorn probably. And um, well, at least when I'm there and now they go, oh, hey, you got to wash your hands. But um, I think, um, say, I told you. They were playing Skippo, too. But anyhow, they're so good. You guys are awesome, by the way. I always like to hassle them just because we love them so much. And in here, too, it, has, it says, I have called you, my people, to have a closer walk with me. We need nothing else but him. Amen. And in fact, maybe uh, just you can lightly play nothing else. And then I, I, I'm going to do something a little different today than what, you know, it's, I'm always different. So as you know, you guys, whoever knows me. Yes. And I babble. Oh, who said that? Oh, there you are. <laughs> just an angel up there. So it's so good. I, I don't, yeah, you know, we're good friends. Hey, we, have, we each have a mic right now. Oh. <laughs> but wait. Yeah, we have a mic, I guess. Anyhow, uh, I love her so much. She's awesome, by the way. And you know what? The more you get to know her, everybody, you'll know what I mean. Even though I'm cut off from guitars, I can't buy guitars, no more T-shirts and jeans. I tried to change today. I tried to wear something else, but I just I couldn't do it. I don't know why. Yeah, hey? she tried on a dress shirt last night. Tried a few. You know, because we're up here, and we got so much at home. It's like, I just never wear them. But, you know, I just wanted to work that into my message, into the message, because you don't have to change. We just got to change what's inside, not what's outside. Amen? So I'm going to bring something out here. One second. This is going to be a little different, but it's okay. Right now, I want... Because of this message about the fish, I brought some fishy crackers here. And so, you know, you can do things in different ways. And what I want to do is just invite you guys. You know what? If you want to cast your net on the other side, today is a new day. Yesterday is behind us. Yesterday is like gone. And what I love about God is he forgets everything. And if we want to go forward with him. And if you guys want to cast your net on the other side, all you got to do, you know what, just come and grab a fishy cracker. There's enough here for everybody. But what I want this to represent is 
thinking, you know what, I've decided to go to the other side. I want to do it now. You know what, I, I'm just retuning, refining my mind. God's restoring each one of us every day. I'm not proud. I always got to get restored. And I want this to be like a reminder that I'm restoring. I want to change. So there's some here for everybody. You can eat them. But the thing is, what, I don't know how your mind works, but my mind works is um, every time I see these now, I'll remember. Because we need that reminder daily when we wake up. Because God loves you so much. The world is too big. Too many noises out there. It's so loud that sometimes we can't hear it as good. But God wants to restore each one of us. He restored Peter. And Peter was still serving, by the way. <laughs> right? So what does that tell you? What does that tell me? It's like, wow, God, you're working on me daily. Every day is a new day. Every day I get closer. And I'm so thankful, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just pray, God, right now. I pray for your people. I love my brothers and sisters here. We're all the same. We're all together. I pray for that restoration and reviving in our spirits, God. I pray, Lord, that, you know what? We change how we thought things should be, Lord. And God, we want to move in you. We want to move in unity. We want to move as a body that, you know what? Each one of them here can do. Every single person has a testimony. Everybody has something to say. And God, I just pray you just keep birthing that within each one of us. This place will grow. The world will grow. And I love it about, you know, God loves the things about world changers. We need to become the world changers. Amen. And you don't have to be 10 years old or 12 years old or 60 years old or 70 or 80. Jesus is calling right now to each one of us here. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, pick me. I'm ready, Lord. I choose, Lord, to follow, Lord. I choose to do what you want me to do. I will listen and cast my net on the other side. Even though I've worked so hard all my life, but I know it's going to be better. Because I love what Peter said. Because you said so, I will do it. Hallelujah. God, because you said so, I will do it, Lord. We thank you for the fish. <laughs> the 153. I thank you for your word, oh God, that you show us and you teach us, oh Lord, Holy Spirit. You're the best. Thank you so much for coming into our lives, Lord. And Lord, right now, I just pray, Lord God, and you know what? I thank you for the fishy crackers, God. And may it just be a reminder every time we see a fishy cracker that, hey, we want to get that fish. We love you, Lord Jesus. I just love every single person here, Lord God. I pray, God, that you just touch them all, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that, you know what? As, as we always pray, Lord, that your, sh your light shines upon each one here, upon the children, oh God. Hallelujah. We are dysfunctional people, oh Lord. And that's all right, he says, because that's when he brings in the function. Amen. Hallelujah. And we need him so bad. So, um, you guys, you know what? I have, we have fishy crackers, which is so good. Good snacks. So we're just going to say, you know what? If you choose, if you want to come and cast your net, just come and get some fishy crackers, right? It's, and they taste good and you can eat them. They're like amazing. And it's all we're doing is declaring, God, I want to change. I want to move. I want to throw my net on that side, on the right side. This may be, I used to be a Sunday school teacher, by the way, just saying. But, but this will remind us of how, you know what God wants. He just loves you so much. And no matter how difficult things get, 
Today is a new day, amen? So good. If we can just sing that song here, nothing else will do, and we'll just we'll just do a little bit of worship here, and there's tons, yes. Oh, empty. See, like, look at all the fish. There was, there was like a, I won't say there was 153 of these, but there was over 100. And you guys can grab two if you want to. But um, I just want to say you guys are amazing. Love you guys so much. And even you on, you know, on, um, when you're watching this online, write in and then we'll send you fishy crackers, okay? We just want you. And just worship, right? Because it's the Holy Spirit that does it. Amen? Hallelujah. serving the church behind the scenes. God sees your heart. It's amazing. I wanted to leave everybody with the priestly blessing before we go today. So if you want to receive this, just stand and hold out your hands. The Lord said to Aaron, this is the priestly blessing. I want you to give the people because the Lord wants us to live and live well. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a phenomenal week. We will see you on Saturday.